Hi guys, welcome to Cryptids Canada. I hope you're all having a great day. So, before I get to the business at hand, I wanted to ask a question. How many of you believe that Bigfoot are Nephilim? And how many of you believe that they're just flesh and blood, everyday creatures like you and I? Or do you believe that there's something else? I'm really curious to know what your feelings are on this. You don't have to leave a great big long message. You can just put Nephilim or flesh and blood. And if you want to explain, that's great too. Uh, I'm just really curious about this because um, I had a conversation with somebody and uh, I mentioned something and they uh, kind of went off on me about it. And I'm, wow, have I been missing something all this time? I guess it's just always been my opinion that, you know, this whole topic is a journey and we are trying to fit things together to the best of our abilities. And that's why, personally, I respect these researchers so much because that's the only thing we have to go on is, you know, what this one has discovered versus what this one has discovered. And we put the pieces together. So anyways, I just am very, very curious, really, what is going on out there? Because I've been clearly blindfolded all this time, I guess. Okay, enough of that. On to the story. It's just titled Bigfoot. Sweet and simple. Love it. Okay, hello, Leslie. I'm a cryptid researcher and I get stories sent to me. I'll send them to you if you need some. Peace. Well, I'm going to withhold the name as he asked me to. And you know what? I always need stories. So send away. Send away. I am reporting on a strange incident from 2008 that happened very near Stonehenge on the Salisbury Plain in Wilshire. I was later told the area was east of Goverly Wood. My mother and I saw something moving across the clearing that we just cannot explain. It was moving quite far away, so I did not get a close look at the face or anything. But you could tell it wasn't just two people moving at a speed. I'm used to seeing cows and farm animals from far away because there's animals everywhere in Salisbury. As you drive, you get used to seeing animals or wildlife in the fields. But these were not cows or sheep. These figures stood out as odd. There were two really big upright figures in a far field that were striding along quite fast together. One was light brown in color and the other was darker. They were moving at a fast pace away from us. We both were so shocked that we kept asking each other if we both definitely saw that. At the time, we were in the car driving back home on the A36, and I just wanted to stop and get out to have a cigarette. Mom decided to come out with me to stretch her legs and get some air. We were just looking out into the countryside and talking when we saw these two huge figures walk out in front of the bushes. If they hadn't moved, we would never have seen them. They walked from behind the bush and were headed towards the next clump of trees. It felt like they were in our line of sight for a good minute or so before they moved behind another bush in the field, and we couldn't see them again. We looked for a while, but they just didn't come back out or move this way. I know what people will say, but they were much bigger than any cow I'd ever seen, let alone a human. Even from that distance, you could see that they were walking at a very fast pace, definitely standing upright on two legs. It was just crazy. It was probably between 3 and 4 o'clock in the afternoon, so the light was good. It hadn't come dark yet and during the end of February 2018. I've never really been into anything like this, but since I saw it, I just can't explain it. I really want to find out more, to be honest. What are they? 
It looked like two ape man type things. The Sasquatch picture I've seen looked pretty close to what I saw that day, but that's impossible. Has anyone else seen anything like this in that area? We were able to see them for quite a while. I didn't even think of my phone, let alone feel compelled to take any pictures. It wasn't until after I thought about that. Why didn't I take a picture or video? Which is strange because you would have thought that if you saw something like that, you would immediately want to capture it. But I just didn't feel like that at all. We just watched them as they walked, waited a few minutes and got in the car and drove home. We did keep asking each other, did we really see that? What were they? How could we have seen them? And I'm still wondering that now. Name withheld. Well, I can uh, tell you, same thing happened to me. Actually happened to me the other night with the stupid mice on my porch. You, you're you watching, you're fascinated, and then you think about your camera, you turn to get your camera, and then the whole thing is over with. Because it's like, I don't know why, but these creatures can sense that they're about to have their picture taken. I believe this. And then they boot scooted out of here. So anyways, but thank you for sending that in. I appreciate it. And like I said, if you've got more, send them in. Okay, I've got another one here and she just titled it My Daughter's Sasquatch Experience. Hi, I'd like to share a story of my daughter's experience. I currently live in Southern California. Growing up, I went to the San Diego Wild Animal Park and often went to the San Diego Zoo and the museums at Balboa Park. The Natural History Museum was always my favorite. I watched programs like Jacques Cousteau and Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Oh my gosh, do you remember that? Every Sunday, I remember at my grandmother's, we'd have dinner and then that would be the only part of Sunday that I could bear. <laughs> Anyways, she goes on to say, in the 70s, I remember seeing the patterson Gimlin film on TV. I was never sure there was such a thing as Bigfoot. I do know there was a new species being discovered every day and some not yet discovered. I met my ex-husband when my family moved to Ventura County, California. We got married and had our daughter, and after our divorce, he moved to Washington State. While raising my daughter, we visited L.A. museums and La Brea Tar Pits. I think I, I hope I said that right. I was a member of the L.A. and Santa Barbara zoos, and we often went. We would watch programs like Nat uh, National Geographic's Wild, Animal Planet, and documentaries together. When she graduated from high school, she decided to go live with her father in Washington State. She even worked for a horse rescue there. My daughter shares my love for animals and nature, and we are very close. So, when she told me her story, I believed her completely. It was late fall of 2012. Her father, some of his friends, and my daughter went to spend the day near Mount Baker, Washington. She and another lady decided to go for a hike. A half hour into their hike, they came to the end of a ridge that overlooked a valley. As they were admiring the view, they heard a very strange and loud howl. It seemed to be paralleling them on the right not too far away. They then heard another howl on the adjacent ridge on their left, and it seemed as if it was a response. My daughter asked, what, what is that? And the friend said she had no idea. Since they were by themselves and had no bear spray or protection, she said they didn't want to find out. So they decided then and there to run back as fast as they could. My daughter said she had never been so scared in her whole life and both of them had chills. She also said that the sound seemed to vibrate right through her chest even though the one howl on the ridge was a distance away, they felt that whatever it was could be on them quickly. I asked if she told her dad, because he's a hunter and had experience tracking, 
And she said they both agreed not to say anything to the others because they felt that no one would believe them as they could hardly believe it themselves. She tried to rationalize what she had heard, and I asked her if she could describe the sound. She said, Mom, I have never heard anything like this in any of the programs, in all the animals that she's heard. She commented that the closest sound she could compare it to would be a howler monkey, only louder and deeper. I then asked her if it could have been an echo bouncing off the other ridge. She said no, because the second howl had only howled once and had a different tone to it, so it could not have been an echo. They both felt that there was two animals and that one was following them and wherever they were, were communicating with each other. There are no known primates in Washington state and my daughter knows what a wolf, coyote, bear, and elk sound like and she knows the difference. Also, the howl was too loud and long to be a known predator. She said she would never go back to that place because she felt that people were not welcome. Thank you for the opportunity to share her story. I follow you and a couple of other Bigfoot organizations on YouTube, and I watch Bigfoot research programs on TV. Because I believe what my daughter told me, and I believe Sasquatch are indeed real and do exist. And that's the end of the story. Um, There was no... Well, there's no name, but uh, there's. I'm just going to leave it at that because I would hate to put somebody's name out there and upset somebody. So, anyways, I think I've got time to do another one. This one is titled Flashback. Hello again. Hope all is well. Love your channel and submit only to you. Hmm, that's nice to hear. I've been having trouble with fear to the extent that I moved to the center of town and onto the fourth floor of an apartment in a locked building. My little rented house along the railroad tracks was too vulnerable. I've woken abruptly too many times, and once with the door wide open in the wee hours. I'm sure I have at least a bit of PTSD from a few close-to-home encounters with the unknown, not to mention a history of ghost stuff but I'm only talking Bigfoot stuff right now. I want to point out, guys, that uh, we have heard from Scott before. I'm going to put the episode numbers in the uh, description box below if you want to go back and check out the videos he has sent in before. So then he goes on to say, Recently, I've experienced flashbacks to my childhood and one incident in particular. I was around six to eight years old. In my estimate, it was late in the evening in my recollection. It could have been around Halloween because we were watching Christopher Lee as Dracula on one of the only three channels we could get in the early 70s. Oh, I remember that well. I was with my brother, only 11 months older, and if I recall correctly, some of the neighborhood kids, my older sister must have been babysitting because my parents would not have allowed us to watch a scary movie, let alone Dracula. We had a huge bowl of popcorn, and I recall getting up from the floor and my spot as we all surrounded the bowl. I needed some water and proceeded into the kitchen to get a drink. Our house was such that you could enter the kitchen from the living room and proceed in a complete circuit through the dining room and back to the living room. As I carried my cup of water through the dining room, my attention was drawn to the window on the side of the house that faced the neighbors. On that side of the house was a stand of cedar trees that hugged the house and provided a bit of privacy. The houses were close together in the small village. I used to like it there, a private little sanctuary. What I saw, while scary, was not threatening. I looked at it for just a moment, unable at that age to make sense of what I saw. But it was a big, ugly face looking at me. Perhaps it was a bit startled that I noticed it and retreated. 
I proceeded to nonchalantly tell everyone that a Dracula was looking in the window, but that it didn't look like Dracula. They just dismissed me, and the night went on. It's only now that, through a flashback, including dreams recalling the experience, that I remember a few details of this experience. Let it be noted that our house, though in the village, backed up onto a forested area and a quarter mile from a graveyard encounter I had years later, which I shared with you previously. Thank you for being a safe place to share. Thanks again, signed Scott. Well, of course, my darling, you are very, very welcome. Um, We are always here for you. And Scott, if you would like to have somebody to talk to a little bit, you know, further about this stuff, please let me know because uh, I know a couple of people that don't mind uh, doing a little bit of counseling when it comes to this kind of stuff. So anyways, I think that's going to be it for now. You know I love you. Don't forget, hit the like button. Hit the bell for notifications and subscribe. And uh, don't forget, come back here Friday night because I'm going to put the Q&A werewolf up. I get the feeling that you guys like the werewolf the most. (laughs) Dogman or the werewolf. Okay, guys, bye for now.